Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, which I have titled "The Pillars of Rhythm," I am going to look at all the aspects of rhythm which you will find from time to time as you are playing songs or as you are improvising or composing or even if you use a recording software, you will find these things which need to be known. Also, from a perspective of notation or sheet music, a few of these terms and symbols will be used. However, I am also So, going to include some terms which are not official but are very important because we use them while we jam and play with play music with each other. So, first of all, when I look at any property of music, be it rhythm, melody, or harmony, I look at it from a macro as well as a micro perspective. Macro basically means for the whole song or at least for an entire section of a song. So, what are all the macro ingredients of rhythm? The macro ingredients of rhythm, which I'll explain shortly, will be the meter or the time signature, then the tempo, and then the time feel. The time feel is the way you feel time, as simple as that sounds. But it's more to do with beat division. Okay. Then, from the point of view of the micro world or the micro perspective, we look at the actual beats. Then the sub beats. We go inside the beats, and then of course, what goes into the beats. You have your notes. Now the pitch of the notes is covered by pitch. You will say, "What scale am I on? What uh, note should I play? What is the key signature?" So that's not what we'll do here. Rather, what about the timing of the note? What about the length or the duration of the note? That's called note value. Okay, so we look at some of those. And what about your? You are following time. You are following. Rhythm is definitely about not just how long the note should be, but also how long nothing should also be for. What about rests? So we look at rests as well. For this lesson, all of the notes will be available on our Patreon page. My handwritten notes. Do consider getting it. And uh, before we get started, it'll be great if you can consider hitting that subscribe button. That helps our channel a lot. And there's a bell also, so you don't get lost with our uh, channel's content. We release a lot of regular stuff. So. Consider giving those buttons a push, and um, that's about it. Let's get cracking. First of all, we need to understand a very important goal of music, which I feel is contrast. Everything should be different with respect to each other. If you look at harmony, you already have that. You have tension, and then resolution or There's generally going to be a different energy state of each harmonic movement or even each melodic movement. So why not even for rhythm? So with rhythm, we look at different types of contrast with respect to strong and weak beats. That's a very important thing to understand. And then of course. Notes versus rests to play something or to not play something. The presence of it and the absence of it, and then the other two kinds of contrast which you can do for rhythm and music in general would be something loud versus soft. So you can do loud, soft, soft, loud, soft, soft, loud, soft, soft, or you can do something long and then short. Okay, so contrast is going to be very important. The point of learning something, I think, is to generate contrast, even with a painting or any form of art. So the first thing we look at is meter or time signature. If you observe, you'll have a numerator and a denominator in a meter, right? So what does the numerator and the denominator mean? The numerator indicates the number of beats per measure or per bar, or if you want another word, maybe cycle, or it could even be phrase or cycle, depending on the context. But generally, what people say is it's the number of beats per bar, and that can be Any number, it can start from even one. So you can have a one by something. You can have two. But the commonly used top number or the numerator is four, as you may already know. Three is also used very commonly. You can call that waltz music, for example. Two. And the meter basically sets up what we call as the pulse. So if I'm playing a song like this, I'm playing a lot of notes, but my head is not going. 
head is not moving to the piano it's moving to what's beyond all of this which is the flow of the song the flow of the song is the pulse and you don't just keep doing the pulse you don't you don't need to go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 forever if you look at the music there's a lot of cycling happening so, a new cycle so how long did it take for that phrase to be built 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 four so it's taking four head movements for that tune to kind of re- repeat itself in a different uh, avatar so to speak so the time signature generally takes from the pulse the pulse will be how you move and the pulse will be at a certain tempo so this is a metronome which for its basic function just gives us the tempo of the song so this is 120 beats per minute 1 2 3 4 or 1 2 3 1 2 3 so depending on your time signature you can go 1 2 3 or 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 and this is 120 which we call as allegro that's the italian term which used to be used and probably continues to be used for classical music then if i go uh, a bit more uh, moderato that's 90 this is how 90 sounds 1 2 3 4 so the the pulse is definitely controlled by the speed of your music and this can be accessed in the modern day world with an app a simple app called a metronome okay so if i go all the way down to 60 which is uh, what we call as adagio this is slow but, but actually this is the speed of a clock you know 60 beats per minute to 3 4 1 2 so this is called the tempo of the song and the tempo needs to be observed by the musician by moving our head to the pulse or somehow our body has to move so if it's 60 bpm 1 2 let me bring back 60 2 3 4 1 2 3 Four and I'm counting four beats per bar, three, four, one. So that four beats per bar could be the time taken for my chord to change. Two, three, four. Next chord. Two, three, four. Next chord. Two, three, four. Next chord. Two, three, and so on and so forth. It could also be the duration of my melodic phrase. one change and if i want to make that faster or maybe even more faster presto you know or i can just half my speed and let the metronome stay it, its ground and right now the metronome is playing at a fast speed why not i now move the metronome to a slow speed and play the music at all these different rates rate 1 2 maybe sp- next speed next speed so on and so forth. you can kind of keep your metronome to be the same and just go double so 60 double would be 120 and then 120 double would be 240 i guess
so in a nutshell the meter the pulse and the tempo they are all related to each other and these are macro perspectives or macro things you need to decide with respect to rhythm the meter is the number of beats per phrase or cycle or officially bar or measure and the speed of the beat is tempo how fast the beat moves and then naturally when you hear music or play music or do anything with music you have to first in this flow chart of events you have to start with the pulse okay the pulse will will be how consistently you move to music the rate at which you move and if you cannot do that it's going to be very tough for you to proceed forward with the rest of what you're trying to do in the field of rhythm at least okay so moving on now what about the denominator of the meter the denominator the by 4 you say 4 by 4 the top 4 is basically number of beats per bar the bottom 4 is which note gets the beat or which note value are you going to be representing in the sheet music so the bottom 4 is more from a western music notation perspective so 4 by 4 basically implies that you're going to be playing crotchets or quarter notes or you're going to be notating them as well So three by four would also be three crotchets in a bar. Five by four would be five crotchets in a bar. So basically, if you take even a even a song which has five beats in a bar, basically this one, it'll be one two three four five one two three four five one two three. So it's a five by four something by four. But it could also be five by eight or it could be seven by eight. For example. Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now this is a seven by four or a seven by eight. It would actually be a seven by eight. The reason we say seven by eight is we notate it using eighth notes or quavers. And in my opinion, the main reason is how our head moves. A, a head will not move. That your head is not going to move that fast, and it cannot unless you're a head banger at a heavy metal music festival, where probably that's the rate of the head movement. Now, in the case of seven by eight, what happens is your head will move irregularly. or it, it you may want to move your head in crotchets while the music is being played in quavers 1 2 1 2 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and you know or 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 we are counting that as quavers or eighth notes but our head won't move like that So a head could do things like one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So my head is not doing the pulse anymore, which is why for the for odd time signatures, it generally is notated with a eight in the bottom, seven by eight, five by eight. But in some cases, like Money by Pink Floyd, it's actually seven pulse sticks because it takes seven beats for the cycle to finish off. See, money. Six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, bum, 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 ba, one, two, three. Versus a seven by eight song. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, tuck, jun. Can always be further divided. You can do this in threes plus fours. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. 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 One. So that's about the numerator and the denominator for a meter. The numerator will always be any number, any uh, integer number from one upwards, and the denominator will always be a Power of two, you could say. So two plus zero is one. So you're notating whole notes, which I haven't seen, but theoretically you can. Uh, two plus one would be two. So you're notating it as minims. Example: three by two, or five by two, or one by two, or whatever. Uh, then, of course, uh, 
if the denominator is 4 it will be 2 power 2 so that will be 3 by 4 4 by 4 5 by 4 6 by 4 7 by 4 and like I said earlier you can also do 7 by 8 so the feel of a 7 by 8 is very different than the feel of a 7 by 4 because 7 by 4 will take you seven beats for the cycle to complete while your head moves seven times for the most part at least seven by eight your head won't move in sevens your head will just move with accents or accent grouping or maybe with a slower pulse and then on top of that your music goes in groupings of one two three one two three four one two three or uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, right? So that's about meter and time signature and tempo. Now let's get into the micro topics. First off, the note duration. You can have a sound or else you can have a rest. What are the sounds? The sounds can last for any amount of time, right? A very long sound would be a whole note. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then if I drop it down, I could do a a note for three counts that's a dotted half note the egg a line and a dot whole note is just just an egg so one two three one two three one two three while a note which has two counts that's a minimum one two one or a half note two one two one two three four so in a in a bar of four you can have two minims one two three four one two Three, four, or in a bar of four, you can have only one semi brief or whole note. One, two, three, four. Be careful of this note, it might put you to sleep. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Then you can even have a crotchet or a quarter note which lasts for one count. In other words, it's actually at a pulse level, it goes with your head movement. One, two, three. So I can actually combine these, these four together semi brief, minim crotch it and dotted uh, dotted minimum and do a bunch of things like dotted minimum meets crotch it 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 or i can do two minims 1 2 3 4 1 2 or four crotchets or maybe do um two crotchets and one minim And then in addition to that, you have ways to change the value of these notes. And there are just two basic ways. One is the dot which worked for the dotted half note. What does a dotted half note do? A dot will extend the value of a note by half of its value. So a minim has two counts. The dot will add half of that two. What is half of two? One. What is two plus one? Three. So that's three. What about a crotchet with a dot? A crotchet with a dot would be, crotchet already has one. The dot will add half of one. One plus half equals to one and a half. So it'll sound like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So I can do uh, two dotted crotchets now. One and two and three and crotchet. One and two and three and crotchet. And then two and three and crotchet. Another thing I can do with notes is extend them using ties. So a tie will extend a note by another note but then that second note will not be sounded. So if I tie a semi brief with a minim that's just going to be one note for six beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can also use ties between bars so that the beats add up correctly. And then in addition to that, you can put in your tuplets. Like in, in the space of one crotchet, you can play three uh, triplets, uh, eighth note triplets. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One or I can do one, two, one and two and two and two. So that's a minimum triplet. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. And or I can do a uh, quarter note triplet. One. And Now, if you take the pulse note, if you take the crotchet, I can start dividing that. My note duration, if I now add, if I make the crotchet shorter, 
it becomes a quaver. One, two, three, four. So two quavers make up a head count. One, two, three. Then I showed you the triplets earlier. Eighth note, where three makes up one crotchet. I can go deeper. Semi quaver, semi quaver, semi quaver, semi quaver. Takat, one e and a two e and a three. You can count this as one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, if you wish. So that's your semi quavers dividing by four. Quaver dividing by two. Triple it. Pulse crotchet. Now with all of this you can have rests. So if I take four semi quavers, that's four sixteenth notes. You're occupying every sub beat of the beat. I can do things like not play the two or not play the third sub beat. This is where rests come in. So rests along with notes allow you to utilize the beats. And then the beats need not only be counted or observed on the beat. Three, four. They can be multiplied. One, two, three, four. Even though my count is going forward, I can play a note which lasts longer. That's what I call as beat multiplication. One, two, three, four. It's going longer. Then the beat. Or you can do beat division. Where I'm going inside the beat. By four. There we go. Okay, and while you have beats and sub beats, generally speaking, the strong beat would be the one, two, three, four. And all the weak beats would be the one E and two E and three E and for E and all the off beats and if you're counting something without subdivisions then generally the strong beats would be the 1 and 3 1, 2, 3, 4 while the weak beats would be the 2 and the 4 or you can say strong is 1 the rest of the 3 are weak so it also depends on how you use them in music right so you have beats and sub beats and how are beats and sub beats formed? When you start dividing the beat. Now that I've talked about beats and sub beats, let's look at what a time feel is, which is actually a very macro thing to deal with in music. A time feel is basically how beats are divided, but also how you feel it. So the two basic time feel distinctions would be swing feel and straight feel. So if you take something with eight notes, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, that's straight. One, two, da dum, pa pum, pa pum, pa pum, pa pum, pa pum. That's swing. Pa pum, pa pum, pa pum, pa pum, pum, pum. That's straight. So swing can be looked at taking a triplet. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and not playing the two, the middle one. One, two, three, 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 one, two, touch, touch. Another way you could look at it as take it as straight first and that and move it as much back as you want, you know. So then it becomes how much of swing are you trying to actually add in the song? What's the percentage of swing? So is it a normal triplet swing? Or some other percentage of swing which I can't calculate. I don't have a knowledge of it being 83% swing or something like that. That is a bit beyond me. But you have to feel this based on the song, maybe based on the drum on the drum groove which is happening. And alongside that, you can also do a triplet time feel. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, play some of it. So three kinds of time fields, straight, swing and triplet. And just to add, 
alongside the straight and the swing feel you can also divide by four and then swing so i can go one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and swing this so the e's and the ers are getting swung versus dun 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 straight swing that's your time feel Okay a few more topics before we sign off let's now look at rhythmic devices the way i look at rhythmic devices is you can think of it as a short motif or a very short phrase which is sometimes just about a beat long so if you take one beat and just ask yourself if what can i do in that beat before you ask yourself that we've discussed a few topics before one is beat division or the time feel how much am i dividing that one beat by let's say i want to divide it by 3 So what are the permutations i can have alongside the 3 1 2 3 1 2 i can play all the 3 so rhythmic devices is basically where you're going to play and where you're not going to play where am i not playing now i'm not playing at the middle triplet point 1 2 now ta 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 1 2 one trip one trip one trip i'm not playing at the third now i'm not playing at the one one two one two one two so i'm still dividing by 3 but i have all these rhythmic tools and if i combine many of these rhythmic devices together they finish off the phrase so maybe i can do right so let's look at the penultimate topic of this lesson that would be groupings and accented phrases the best way i would start explaining it is with time signatures itself again now we go back to macro where if you say a song is on 6 by 8 how is that different than 3 by 4 lot of people think it's pretty much the same right so 6 by 8 what distinguishes it from 3 by 4 6 by 8 will have two sets of 3 while 3 by 4 will have three sets of two so the same amount of time is is going on 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 with 3 by 4 if i divide by 2 it will still be 1 2 3 4 5 6 because it will add up to six beats so if 3 by 4 is being divided by 2 and 6 by 8 is just being played as quavers the feel of it will be very different check this out with 6 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 the the hit points are at the 1 and the 4 1 and the 4 1 and the 4 while with 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 
now grouping can be very very interesting for example you can do semi quavers but usually when you look at semi quavers they are in a pack of four one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. you can group semi quavers in maybe threes but still play them to divide the beat by four i'll repeat dividing the beat is going to happen now by four but in this case the grouping is also in fours correct and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a, why can't i make the groupings in threes now this feels like triplets what if i do 3 plus 3 plus 2 what does that add up to 8 correct but in this guys this is this is nothing but 4 by 4 One e and a two e and a three. But if I group it, one, two, one two three, one two, one two. Just to prove it's four by four, I'm actually playing what my head is doing and doing the pulse in my left hand. So I can even expand this into three, 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 three. That's twelve, and then four, sixteen. Let's see what that sounds. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Of course, this is inspired by by our friend. So all permutations either can add up to the sixteen, or you can do something very interesting. You can keep hold your ground, three, four, one, divide by four. So that will be one e and a two e and a three e and. Or you can say takadimi, takadimi, takadimi. But now I say takadimi because it gives me a four feel. I can convert that to. Tuck it, 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 tuck it. That's tuck it. Means groups of three. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. Now, what if I just keep the thas? Tuck, 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 tuck. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So it becomes three with my hands. One, two, and with my mouth. Tuck. Pom 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 pom. So that could be considered as a polyrhythm. So there's three going on in the left. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, and that's going to come out in the right hand. Four. You could probably call that as a four over three kind of a polyrhythm. So you can do all sorts of things rhythmically by now in this environment. I'm combining time signatures together using accented phrasing. So accents are very important. Even though you divide by three or four at a macro level, at the micro level, you're then adjusting the way the notes are grouped or the way the notes are placed. One two three. 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 As opposed to one two three four. One two three four. One two three four. And finally, to cap off this discussion, I'd like to say that a lot of things in the field of rhythm, even from the macro perspective, can be changed. changed from time to time during the same song from one section to the next or even from bar to bar from one bar you can do 4 4 going to 7 8 or 13 uh, 8 going to 6 8 or some such thing it completely depends on the way you are feeling the music or the way you want to compose so polymeter would be one way to add many time signatures one after the other you can do 7 then going to 8 of course that's 15 but you can think of it as 7 meets 8 or you can do um 4 meets 7 by something meets 13 or whatever a polyrhythm is where you bring time signatures together and superimpose them polymeter is where it happens 
bar by bar or section by section right and you can also adjust the tempo which is very rare but here and there yes you can probably make the end of your song a lot more slow like some of the rock songs do um obviously you have double time and half time where you take the drum groove and and then half it or double the speed and so on so you can do various things keeping the same tempo uh, but you can even change the tempo right guys so in this tutorial we've covered pretty much all the essential elements of rhythm and we thought we'll put it all together in one lesson there are my notes which will help supplement the learning so do consider getting that on our patreon and that's about that thanks a ton for watching the video and i will catch you in the next one cheers